Oracle Intuitive Guidance Reading for the month of April 2020 by Sheila Bicknell, Blue Water Oracle. Cave. Sanctuary. Really? <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Enter my amazement and huge appreciation for my oracle cards and universal divine wisdom here. For those who are not yet or not able to follow my live sessions on my Blue Water Oracle page and my Oracle Cove membership group on Facebook, I will let you know that we have had this card come up a few times over the last few weeks, speaking to these current situations and the changes in our routines. It is an incredible card as so many more people are in their home, quote unquote, caves, and seeking sanctuary in new or deeper ways. Before you read ahead to this guidance reading, give yourself a moment to look at this card. Look at the image, feel into it, receive the words and what they mean to you. This is your time to connect with your intuitive knowing. At one point in history, someone discovered a cave. The animals who used them were already aware of the shelter and sometimes deep water they provided. Then humans found that these natural rock and soil phenomenon were also important to shelter from the elements, from other animals, to create fire away from the wind, and to gather together. These were places that tools created could be kept food could be eaten, young and older family members could be safe. Stories, legends, lessons, and wisdom could be shared by firelight when being out in the dark was not recommended or when the outside elements were a challenge. In other parts of the world, people created their own quote-unquote caves. Not having those rock locations, they created shelter in whatever way best spoke to them when needed with the resources available. Perhaps they climbed up a tree for shelter. Perhaps they made a hut. Perhaps grass and branches created a lean-to, and so on, unique to each region and each people. At some point, someone claimed the best cave. It might have been the one with the deepest cavern, the one with the purest access to fresh water, the one the wind didn't enter, or the one with the best view of the hunting and gathering grounds. As people grew, more quote-unquote caves were needed, and someone chose that one would get the bigger and better caves than others. In some areas, and by some people, this might have been done for good reasons. In other areas, this was done with the concept of, I am better and deserve better than you. Each of those caves provided shelter, but some did it better than others. Certain people were able to survive and thrive more than others. With this attitude and this result, effects trickled down. Some caves kept growing, others got smaller or had none. The desire for more grew in certain populations. This led to the acquiring and the creating more to acquire more. Some acquired and others had barely enough. Was this wrong or was this just the way of things? What were the options? As the acquiring, getting more, having more, and deserving better than another continued to grow, its effect continued to trickle down, becoming more of a rush of effect and results. Unbalance started to be more apparent. Unbalance between peoples leading to unbalance in resources. Unbalanced effects onto the natural world leading to more need to acquire, gather, keep, and protects one's own. Note here that humans are not the only ones who gather for themselves, who protect their territory, family, acquisitions, and their quote-unquote caves. It is a part of many lives of creatures and living organisms. 
It is given a part, it is even a part, of many ecosystems involving many levels of life working together for the whole. Humans do it bigger, but do they do it better? A cycle started to increase in volume and in speed, but not in benefit for most. This is being brought up in this way for you to reflect as you are in your cave, and we hope it is providing you with shelter, warmth, or cool, and a good place for your food and family, you are given the opportunity to reflect. Those who are not in reflection mode, but are in extreme active mode out of necessity, will benefit because you have taken the time and effort to reflect. Observe what your needs are, your real needs what your family needs, what brings you the most value and joy in life. Break it down to the bare floor and bare wall perspective, as if you were in the cave in the picture. This is not to discourage you from desiring for more, from hoping for more, from dreaming and dreaming big, but it is about creating all this in balance for the whole. The balance, the respect, is an important piece of the puzzle that is now being presented. You can use the examples of others that you know or see on the news, have visited or see in documentaries to help you compare and observe. What do I need? What do we all need, really? What does the earth need? What do you as people need from the earth? Note the need for integrated effort. This is a great starting point. As you are in these reflections and observations, you are given an opportunity to look to your own cave. What represents need and what represents joy in your space? There is nothing wrong with either. This is to bring your awareness into your home and how you are creating it. What decor do you love and that brings you joy or learning? What tools are available that really help you? How do they help you? Notice what is a true need versus a need that has been created. Again, not for you to completely change everything today, but for you to notice and to bring awareness. Where is the balance? Where is the respect for you, for your loved ones, for others, for the whole and for the earth? sanctuary. At a time when many are scared and suffering, which in reality happens every day all the time on earth in recent history, just the format right now might be a little different. Creating your sanctuary is important for you and for those close to you. What is most important for your sanctuary? What in your space and your cave is not working towards your feeling and desire for sanctuary? Your first reaction may be that you are not able to make changes right now. The awareness of the need for change is an important first moment. What would you change if you could? Remembering balance and respect. What is one step that you could make towards that? Inner Sanctuary You are connected with you at all times. Your mind and body work together to keep you safe, fed, functioning, and well. This is an important time to align with your own system. What does it need right now? How can you help your brain and your body achieve their basic objectives? Part of this also speaks to mental health and noticing when you need to be patient and kind with yourself allowing stresses and insecurities to wave up to be noticed, and then working with the system to verify and adjust. Within the mind and body system, there are also the emotions. These are messengers to help you as they connect your history with your present. When they wave up unexpectedly, see what they are bringing to you and how the rest of you, brain and body, are reacting. Bring yourself care in those moments. Listen to yourself and treat yourself well. 
For many, the concept of inner spirit is also part of their inner sanctuary. This is welcoming deeper connection and reflection with with self. It is a step-by-step practice. It is also a practice that reminds you how your mind, body, and emotions are also deeply natural. Like nature, they will go through cycles. Like nature, they will learn and adapt. Like nature, they depend on themselves, but also on the balance of the whole. Take a moment today to feel the inner connection you have, even if it feels a bit wacky right now. It is there, and it holds wisdom for you and for your life. This moment of connection is a beautiful commitment you are making to yourself towards a life living with sanctuary. It is not to only seek it in emergency moments. It is to create it, to be it, for your highest good and for the good of the whole. May your home be your sanctuary. May your connection with others fill you with joy. May your body know sanctuary in its wellness. May your mind know sanctuary through efficiency, calm, and peace. May your spirit resonate with natural flow and balance. May you feel one as part of the whole. With love and deep appreciation, Sheila and Great Spirit Divine Wisdom, working with the Earth Magic Oracle Cards. The Earth Magic Oracle Cards are by Stephen Farmer, published through Hay House. This written reading can be found on my Blue Water Oracle Facebook page, as well as on my bluewateroracle.com website in the blogs and posts section. I am available for intuitive, personal guidance readings. They can be written by text, audio recorded, online, and eventually again in person. Please reach out to me on my Facebook page, on Instagram, by email, text, or whatever way works for you. I look forward to connecting. Be wise and be well.